Hello, my friends. I'm Rich Larson, and I'm the IRC Tire Guy. Today, we'll be talking the top 10 drills, techniques, and practices all beginners should be working on and every intermediate rider should have mastered. Each one of these techniques, we've done full breakdowns on that you can check out right here. So let's get into it. The technique I'm obviously starting with is static balance. This is that basis of control in any situation. Building this foundation is so important. The best way to learn this technique from scratch is using a small hole for the front tire. We do this to increase the contact patch of the tire itself, as well as the action and reaction for correction when turning from left to right. When I say correction, I mean you can use your front tire's movement to correct your balance. When you fall to the left, you turn to the left. When you fall to the right, you turn to the right. This slight turn in each direction allows the machine to balance back in the other direction. Remember, coming up onto the pegs is probably the hardest part, so repeating the coming up part is the most important. Compress your suspension, lowering your center of gravity, and drive through the peg, slowly coming up with the muscle in your quad. Don't jump off the ground. When in balance, make sure to use both the turning of the front tire in the direction you are falling, as well as the bar and peg pressure in the opposite side you fall. Don't forget to practice this technique with the tire turned in both directions. As you improve, make sure to make the hole smaller and smaller, deliberately making it harder and harder. Up next, let's talk clutch control. This is another fundamental practice everyone should have mastered. Understanding how to use your clutch to control your machine. Honing in your understanding of the friction zone is so important. This is an awesome way to do it. Using a slight incline that you are comfortable with, practicing rolling up and down this incline only using your clutch, no brakes. Often we see the bad habit of grabbing the front brake as soon as the rider begins to roll backwards. It's much safer as well as more efficient to use the slip of your clutch in the friction zone to control a slow backwards descent. The focus here is a steady low throttle and RPM. Instead of chopping the throttle on and off, we hold it steady and actuate our movement with the slip of the clutch in the friction zone. We use the slip out to move up the hill, then bring it in to roll backwards. Avoid pulling the clutch all the way in. This will cause the bike to roll back at a faster than desired pace. Focus on actuating the movement in and out to control your backwards speed. We can also practice holding the machine in one place on the hill with only the slip of the clutch as well as transferring between rear brake and clutch without moving. Don't forget, if you stall the machine, we need to improve and practice. Next, we have some drills that most people have never tried or really even thought of. We're practicing stepping on and off the machine from one side or the other. Although this seems so simple, this is a great technique for understanding how your own weight can be inputted into the machine. The focus here is using your outside peg weight to prevent the machine from tipping away from you. Start on either side of the bike, turn the front wheel away from the side you're standing. With the correct foot on the peg, begin a heavy outside peg pressure as you lean the bike away from your body, focusing on its own balance point. You shouldn't be pulling or really holding the bars with your hands at all. The goal is to input the counterweight with the foot that is on the peg. Standing tall, we maximize the weight on the peg and slowly swing our opposite leg over. Again, we shouldn't jump off the ground with our foot, practicing on both sides as well as both stationary and riding away. This is also great exposure for lack of clutch control and a great practice for jumping off the bike using only the pegs, not the ground when crashing. Now let's talk practicing on command balance. The best way to practice this control is with a slow race drill. This is usually the first of one of the cone drills I like to teach. This is a fun way to get in tune with the throttle clutch control and balance of your machine. We set up a rectangle of cones in a flat area about four feet wide 
wide and 40 feet long. The goal is to spend as much time in the rectangle as possible without, of course, falling out or putting our feet down. Now, when I say on command balance, the goal here is to successfully use the ability to turn to left or right to catch your balance when falling in one direction or the other. Using both our balance via our body position and quick slip of the clutch, we can control the movement of our machine, keeping our feet on the pegs in the bike underneath us going forward. Here, we really focus on a steady throttle and just like our clutch control drills, actuating our movement with the slip of the clutch. This gets you in tune with how to completely control your machine on flat ground and truly is exactly what I'm doing in technical situations. Next up, this is a drill everyone sees and thinks I've got this all day then they never try it. We're talking the cone weave. Spacing seven to eight cones in a straight line at about five to six feet apart or a length that you are comfortable with. If you feel like you were able to do it easy, tighten them up. I'll tell you, five feet is not easy. The control we use is similar to that on-command balance we've spoke about. The goal is to hold a steady throttle and actuate movement with our clutch. Make sure to use a steady front brake control the entire time. This is a great drill for learning throttle input and front brake control at the same time. Now, as the cones get really tight, we can use the additional lean angle and uncoupling from the machine to decrease our overall turning radius and complete each cone weave. When turning to the left, I lean the bike into my left knee and my right knee comes out for counterbalance and vice versa for when we're turning right. If you don't have your static balance mastered, try and hold a steady pace to prevent fighting your own balance. During each weave, make sure to aim your front tire as close to the cone in front of you as possible. This will assist your rear tire in clearing the cone behind you. Again, steady pace and steady throttle, actuating movement and control with your clutch. Don't forget to practice this one uphill, downhill, and side hill for a real challenge. Let's talk full lock balance. Setting cones in a large rectangle, about 50 feet by 25 feet. Note the smaller the rectangle is, the harder this drill is. The goal here is making as many 180 degree turns within this space as possible. This is a great drill to practice uncoupled balanced control. During each turn, the front tire should be fully locked in the required direction. From here, we completely weight the outside peg and lean the machine as much as possible. So much so, I actually remove my inside foot from the peg. I focus on maximizing the lean and minimizing my overall turning radius. Because the speed is so slow, the lean of the bike needs to be counterbalanced by my body position. This is where being comfortable uncoupling as well as that outside peg weight becomes mandatory. Again, we use a steady front brake control with smooth throttle and we actuate our movement with our clutch control. A great tip with this drill for maximizing the amount of turns you make is always have the front tire in a full lock position. The less you drive straight, the more turns you can make. Think of it like trying to make a figure eight inside of the rectangle. Of course, that should be impossible due to the actual size, but the same overlapping turn approach should be attempted. Now let's talk target fixation. Everyone is guilty of this at one time or another. Switchback gates are a great way to expose this bad habit. Setting gate cones at about three feet apart and staggered in an XY axis, 10 feet down and 20 feet across. Repeat back and forth five times. The goal is to complete full lock turns from left to right while riding between each gate without dabbing. This is a great practice for presence while turning, focusing on being where your tires are. Often, we see a fixation of the cones and an over lean and dab when trying to complete a turn. Again, we use that steady throttle and actuation of the clutch to control the machine. These turns should require a full lock balance, outside peg weight, and maximum lean to complete each switchback. Make sure you use that overlapping figure eight turning radius rather than driving straight to the next cone. Don't forget that steady front brake control assisting that slow speed and minimizing your overall turn 
turning radius. Now this is one of the best techniques when it comes to training with cones. It's called gate riding. These are essentially trials practices on the big bike. Now not everyone has a trials bike, but we can find some of the same benefits on the big bike. We randomly place three foot wide gates in a small area. The goal is to ride through them all without dabbing or crossing our own track. The beauty of this drill is it can be done anywhere at any time. Even a small ravine can provide an extremely challenging course. It's about being creative and maximizing the challenge for yourself. This drill is the maximization of balance, body position, throttle and clutch control, as well as a complete understanding of how to make the bike do exactly what is needed. A combination of all the previous control and cone drills we've spoke about. Steady throttle, actuating movement with the clutch, loose and flowing balance and body position. This is that trials form that translates to technical riding. We have to talk about one of the most important practices for technical riding, getting unstuck. This is a must have drill. For beginners, using a slight uphill start and a small hole to put the rear tire in, we first start with an understanding of momentum. I always say, lack of momentum exposes flaws in your technique. When the rear tire is stuck in a hole, we have to find momentum, however slight. Pulling the machine back so the front tire is just in front of the hole itself, we've created an area where we can find that precious momentum. With a slight load on the throttle, clutch in, one foot on the peg, we start with the weight in our hips completely over the rear tire. Next, we use our body position to create counteraction into the machine. The steps happen quickly. One, two, three. We step onto our peg with the foot that's on the ground, drive through the pegs, bringing our weight from our hips forward and then release the clutch with a loaded engine. Creating the drive with our hips counteracts the machine and prevents a wheelie over. As you become more and more comfortable with this movement, increase the size of the obstacle you're practicing on. Finally, let's talk the beginnings of the double blip, wheelies, pivot turns, and pretty much everything riders want to learn the clutch up. The goal here is repeating this practice in succession before you even try an obstacle. Riding forward, we hold a steady throttle with low RPMs. We first focus on maximizing our front suspension compression for an efficient lift. My knees move directly forward towards the radiators as I simultaneously pull in the front brake, clutch, and load the throttle. At my front suspension compression maximum, my clutch is in, my front brake is in, and I have a loaded throttle. With the rebound, I drive my hips back over the rear fender and I push down through my pegs while again simultaneously releasing my front brake, slipping the clutch with the loaded engine, then letting the throttle off. If you leave the throttle on, you'll probably wheelie over. The mix of suspension rebound, hip weight, and a loaded engine create an efficient lift that's the beginning of most techniques. Get this dialed and all the other techniques you want to learn will come easy. Those were the 10 techniques and practices I recommend everyone spend time mastering. I can guarantee it will transfer into your everyday control of the machine. I hope you're enjoying the channel and if you are, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe as well as follow us on Instagram at IRCMoto and my personal Instagram page at richlarson511. And until next time, keep shredding.